Today we're going to be giving you guys some data about the winning percentage in the MLB. My name is Evan Abel. I'm Drew Polizuis. I'm Joe Way. I'm Hui Wang. So the data we're going to be researching is do the amount of runs scored affect a winning percentage of a team? The variables we're going to be looking at are uh, offensive and defensive variables. We got our data from the website Kaggle. And we cleaned up our data in order to do a variety of testings, which we will expand more on later. Uh, and after we found out our data, we interpret the data to come up with a conclusion to answer our question. So this project, or we were motivated by this project because uh, many of our group members played baseball when we were younger, and we uh, loved the sport. And we thought it would be interesting to find out uh, a question that has been asked for many years to what makes a baseball team better and what gives you the most amount of wins. So we're going to be asking what is the relationship between runs scored and a team's winning percentage. We're also going to look at uh, the amount of runs allowed in the team's win percentage and we're going to look at a variety of other variables to see if they have a relationship with them. So after looking at all of our data we came to the assumption that the runs scored will be a main factor in uh, the win percentage of a team. So our first step was cleaning the data in order to be able to run tests. Uh, the first test we ran was a correlation matrix which basically looks at the variables and it allows us to find out which ones have a close or too closely related so we can eliminate those. Next we do a multiple regression. Um, and it gives us the p-values so we can eliminate the p-values that are greater than 0.05. And finally, we ran a time series to predict what the winning percentage of a team will be in the next year. So we are assuming that there is a linear regression relationship between the variables run scored on base percentage, batting average, opponents on base percentage, opponents runs allowed, and opponents slugging percentage. We are, we're going to use this equation right here to test the seven variables. We're also predicting that the residual plots will be normally distributed. So our null hypothesis is that run score does not affect the winning percentage of a team. And our hypo or alternative hypothesis is that run scores do affect uh, winning percentage of a team. We're going to try to reject the null hypothesis in this situation. Up next, Chow is going to tell us about our data in uh, further depth. So for our data, we pulled up our original data from Kaggle.com. In our data, at first it had 1,223 um, rows and 16 columns with different units, variables, which measures offensive and defensive. And that originally it is from year 1962 to 2012 with overall of 50 seasons from each of the 31 teams in baseball. So then we decided to clean our data by first we tried to narrow down the observations we wanted to analyze. So instead of having 1233 rows and 15 columns, we just um, with different units variables, we shortened it down to 421 rows with 14 uh, columns with the same independent and dependence units variables. By doing this, we we short shortened our time frame from 1999 to 2012, and we also removed um, variables that are not important, such as league rank playoffs or ranks in rank season. In order to have more accurate data, we turned some of our variables into some units. Um, then we turned, such as we turned wins into winning percentage and run scored into logarithm and run allowed into a logarithm as well. So then we also added the number of games each team plays in a season, which is 162. And for our dependence variables, which is winning percentage, and then for our independence variables, for uh, it has two different 
focus, which is offensive and defensive. And offensive, it has run score logarithm, uh, on base percentage, slugging percentage, and batting a a average. And for defensive, we have runs allowed logarithm, opponent on base percentage, and opponent slugging percentage. For for the model, we uh for the we use applicable models such as multi collinearity and multi uh, multiple regression analysis and for multi collinearity we have um, we use a correlation matrix to see which variables have too strong uh, a correlation and because it's not really necessary to have two independent variables uh, that have higher correlation because it is it still leads to uh, similar results so that's why we just, uh, for the variable, we just closely look at any variables that are higher than 0.9, then we just not include it because they, the two were too correlated. And for multi, multiple regression analysis, we ran multiple regression models uh, to see how the p-value uh, p is, and then we just remove the p-value that has the, the value that is greater than 0 0.05. For a, in a smaller p-value, the great, um, and for a smaller p-value means a higher level of significance of um, a, set, a certain variable determining winning percentage. And then it worked best, and this model worked best because we have many variables, so it is better if we use multiple regression analysis. And alternatives that we don't really use in our model, which is simple linear regression and hypothesis testing. The reason that we don't use these two models because they, we have, the, our data have multiple variables. And then for simple linear regression, we cannot only use variable for our test, one variable for our test. And for hypothesis testing, we also, as I said, we have multiple variables, so this is not really necessary as well. So our first uh, thing we did was um, do a correlation matrix, and for here we were testing for multicollinearity. Um, we were deciding which variables uh, were highly correlated and had a greater uh, correlation than 0.9, and then we went ahead and removed these variables from our data. So as you can see here, on base percentage was 0.89. That was pretty close to 0.9, so we decided uh, to get rid of that. We also got rid of slugging percentage because it was 0.91, and then about opponent on base percentage as well as opponent slugging percentage, as these were above 0.9 as well. With the same data we did for the correlation matrix, we also ran a regression, a multiple regression model. And as you can see here, the p-value for opponent slugging percentage was greater than 0.05, so we got rid of that as well. But it also in the correlation matrix, it had a cor correlation with another variable that was above 0.9, so we removed that because of the correlation matrix and as well as this. After taking out the four variables due to the correlation matrix and one of them having a greater p-value than 0.05, we ran another regression model. And in this one, as you can see, batting average's p-value was a lot greater than 0.05. It was 0.83, so we, so we got rid of that variable in order for our regression to work. So here are plots for our second regression. And as you can see, this is a linear and also that Batting averages plot, it was kind of off and the range was kind of messed up, so that's why we removed it as well. And this is our final step. Finally, we ran the last regression and it worked out very well. As you can see, we are left with two variables, runs scored and runs allowed, and both these p-values were well under 0.05. So this regression worked out very well. And also, <clears throat> we found our coefficients for our regression model, and the runs scored would be 1.06 and runs allowed would be negative 1.1 and our intercept would be 0.6. Also you can see our R squared is very high, 0.88, which is 
also a good thing in this regression model. So to conclude on this, our winning percentage regression model would be 0.6167 plus 1.06 minus 1.1. And here are plots for the final regression we had. And as you can see again, it's linear and these are some very good plots and they are very normal. So we just wanted to have a little fun and um, try to plug in some numbers to our, our uh, final regression model. So um, some of our team members, their favorite team is the Chicago Cubs. So we use them as a team and base it off of that. So we predicted um, the winning percentage for 2013, the Chicago Cubs. In order to do this, we took statistics from 2012 and used those and plugged them in to our um, final winning percentage uh, regression model. So by doing this, we did 0.6167 plus 1.0628 times 2.8657. And we got this 2.8 from the 2012 season, and that was the run scored in 2012. And then we subtracted the runs allowed, which was 1.1036 times 2.8376. And we got the 2.83 from the runs allowed in the 2012 season. And we added, ended up getting 53% um, winning percentage. And then we, we kind of compared this with the actual winning percentage of the Chicago Cubs in 2013. And we just looked it up on uh, Google, how many wins they had in 2013. And they had a total of 66. So we took that number and divided it by the number of games they played, which every team plays a total of 162 games in a season, and it came out to 40.741%. So we were kind of a little off, but it was also kind of cool to just mess around and see how well our, our equation was. So we decided we wanted to do a time series model to test our uh, data. So we used a three-year moving average and uh, exponential smoothing. And as you can see, our MSE this is our MSE for the three-year moving average and our MSE for the exponential, exponential smoothing. These are very closely related, but exponential smoothing was a little bit um, lower than our three-year moving average. So this would be a more accurate data. And then they predicted the winning percent, exponential smoothing um, prediction was um, 0.4618 or 46.18% chance of winning in 2013. After conducting data analysis, we found run scores and run allows to variables is significant to the winning percentage. The weakness of the model is because we have limited data. So there is an opportunity you can build a good model like you can use more data or you can get more variables like you can add team players or coaches to get a better model. We study seven variables to do regression. So from the regression result, we can see only two variables is uh, most significant to the winning percentage that are running scores and run allows. Also, we find the p-value is uh, less than 0.05. R-square equals 89%. That means 89% of the variability of the value of run scored and the run allowed can be explained by our model. Let us take a closer look at the p-value. We choose the run score beta 1, the p-value. We find the value is really small close to zero so that means less than 0.05 level of significance we reject the hypothesis that beta 1 equals zero so we can conclude that there is a relationship between winning percentage and the run scores also holding other predicted constant increase the unit run scored will contribute one point six percentage winning chance. So overall, we get a good model to do our regression. Overall, we got a good model to find out the winning percentage in the MLB.
Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time.